Hi everyone, my name is Nikhil Elawat and welcome to the Out of Office podcast. It's another show and another very, very exciting guest, Dr. Vani Sood. Uh, Dr. Vani is the daughter of an army officer and she's also the wife of an army officer. She's one of India's most loved and popular teachers given her background in Vedantu, about which we'll be talking more about in this podcast. She has a social media presence of over 12 lakh followers, 10 lakh on YouTube, 2 lakh on Instagram, and now she's working on the way people are consuming social media online. So we'll be discovering more about that in this podcast as well. Uh, Dr. Vani, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Nikhil. Such a pleasure and honor to be here. Same here, ma'am. Same here. So, uh, ma'am, let's let's start. Let's begin the podcast. And, you know, the first question that I have for you, since I'm an army kid too, uh, and, you know, you are also in the army background. You've always been, like, since childhood. Do you think, like, tell me more about, you know, what your childhood was like. And do you think that, being in the army has an effect on, you know, how we are brought up and like our personalities in general? Uh, I, I, I kind of really like this question. Super amazing question. And let me be very honest here, Nikhil. Yeah. See, while growing up, I never could see the other side of the coin. And I think that's, that's so much about life. While yeah. growing up, I hated the forces. I hated that my... <laughs> My father had had to pick up this job because I was always very scared for his life. See, as a as a child, yeah. you're very sensitive also, and being a yeah. girl, you're even more sensitive. I remember, and I I I would love to narrate this incident for your audience. You know, I was very young, and yeah. my father was uh, was posted to a place which was very close to international border, mm-hmm. and uh, I was I remember it was a party or a social evening or something like that, and I'd kind of dozed off in my dad's lap, yeah. and a phone came, and my dad. Uh, took up the call Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I remember this and I I don't know how but it's like this imprint on my mind and I remember it so clearly Mm -hmm. I remember him talking about how many soldiers were returned Mm -hmm. how much were they mutilated and how many casualties were there and this is just when I was about maybe six max seven I'm not I'm I'm sure I was not even seven I was like five six or something like that right and I remember, like, I I know for sure I heard mutilation in, like, maybe a Hindi terminology and things like that. Yeah. And I was scarred, if I may use the word. From yeah. then on, for the longest time ever, every single time my dad used to go out of the home, mm. imagine a young child murmuring prayers. Yeah. So, you know, so, and then leaving your home behind, leaving your friends behind. So, while I was growing up, I was not a very big fan of mm. the forces. I, in fact, never wanted to get married into the forces while I was... I was yeah. in my college years and when the time comes when you think about love and things like that. Correct. But now when I look back, you know, and, and uh, like my mentor, Om Swami, who's who's yeah. also the founder of Wilder, uh, yeah. which is uh, the app in which I'm the country head in India now, you know. Correct. So I remember once I was talking to him, uh, I was taking uh, mentorship from him and I was talking to him about some business decisions. Uh, and, I, and I told him that, you know, this particular business decision is not right. We should have not done it. Yeah. We were talking about an organization which had gone belly up, uh, had raised around 20 billion US dollars, but had still gone belly up. Yeah. And I was I was discussing uh, that entire scenario with him. And he yeah. was like, he, he heard me out. And <laughs> after a couple of minutes, he was like, but isn't that in the hindsight, you know? And yeah. then I, I kind of zeroed that on, Nikhil, because you see, you have sync up and you're running a startup with your brother. And I'm so proud of you being a fellow army child as well, doing that. Yeah. There are so many things that will make sense to us only in the hindsight. And that's how so, life is. While, while yeah. we're going and that's why it's so important to take things with a pinch of salt. Because I remember this so clearly that while growing mm-hmm. up, I was like, why did you have to become an army officer? Why do we have to shift it now? I cannot be more grateful for the experiences because they shape us in so many ways. They mold Absolutely. us in so many ways. And that brings out such nuances of our personality later on that for now, Nikhil, I'll be so honest with you. Yeah. It took me 13, 14 years to build Vedantu. And I gave it all away yeah. on that one one single day to build something from scratch that is Wilder, which is just pre-seed, leaving an organization which had which is like a unicorn for another organization. And I didn't even look back. Not a moment people ask me, did you regret? Did you feel, oh my God, why am I doing it? Not even once, not because that's the way army kids are. Yes. You know, we are so accommodating, we change and we mold and we don't look yeah. back and we that's find the- newer opportunities. That's just the army way of life. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I agree with you. I think uh, just adapting and like moving ahead in life is something that, you know, we all get very used to. And uh, that does definitely have, uh, you know, an impact in everything that we do in life. 
so totally totally agree with you on that um okay uh, uh why so the next question to you is that you said that you know you were pursuing dentistry but then you shifted like to the field of education so tell us more about that how were you like did you actually want to be a dentist <laughs> and then like i think very okay this is this is something i i really want to be honest and i'm i'm you really picked up the yeah. right questions see yeah you know the army now i i i i really you know people who give their all away for for the nation sometimes and there's so many of them who give their all yeah. away uh there was a time uh, you know you are still at least two generations three generations younger than me nikhil we yeah. you know like people like us who are in the mid 30s right now and whose parents yeah. were in the forces we know that uh you know there was always enough uh we had a good lifestyle and there was always enough but there was never enough in the sense that okay you don't have to think about it and you don't really have to uh have to study or there's a business running and you know you couldn't right. care less about it so there was enough but there was always this feeling that listen you've got to make your own life and you've got to work hard for it you either study hard or you do something you excel because your parents have enough but your parents don't have enough that you can forever be dependent on them so this one thing i don't know how and when it came uh, in my psyche and it stayed with me for the longest time ever so the moment i graduated and i was good academically i went to a government college yeah. and the moment i graduated the first thing that i wanted to do at that time was get myself a job so i did try for the army in fact i cleared uh, my uh, exam for the army dental corps and i've never kind oh, wow. of said this in public yes but okay. then during my medicals i got diagnosed with something which is called an extra renal pelvis that means a part of my kidney which ideally should have been inside my kidney mm -hmm. unfortunately is outside my kidney so i was kind of medically boarded out oh okay and uh, and by the time i decided that i want to get married into the forces so see how chatak <laughs> was <laughs> in house smart so by the time i decided that i want to get married into the forces yeah. and then i realized that listen vani setting up a clinic every two years is not a great choice yeah. so it's very smart i was like okay then what next yeah. i said okay we can teach and, and i'm good academically and maybe i can teach so i joined a dental college and then i realized that in a dental college the salaries were horrid for okay. for for professors and i was like okay listen i have big dreams and yeah. i want to i want to do this and i want to go here and with this salary to ye hone se raha so i was like yeah. okay what else so yeah. i was always like this hustler and i think that mindset is is something that you you need to either develop or you have it and yeah. that really makes or shapes a lot of things in your life you know so i was like okay what next so i never was the one to settle down mm. to you know take a no for an answer i was always like this okay what next and also this comes intrinsically from like maybe yeah you know, that's maybe rare i up. think you know that hunger that you had vani i don't think that everybody has it you know that hunger for more that hunger to you know do like greater things achieve like bigger things i think oh. that is something that is like how you mentioned is very intrinsic right Correct. and It, yeah. that that has shaped my life nikhil that i that you know that thing that okay no i can do more i want more and i can do more and i don't want to look at somebody else correct that you provide for me i want to do it for myself i am a smart educated woman and i can do it on my own so yeah. then i i started to look around ki yaar academics mein paisa kahan hai <laughs> where is so i had no jo, love for teaching i'll be very honest with you it kind of <laughs> developed Yeah. It happened over a period of time, yeah. and then I was like, okay, listen, there are these students who want to become doctors, mm. and these pre-medical institutes really give like truckloads of money. I was like, okay, Vani, that's <laughs> that's the thing. So I I went to an institute. The first one only that was uh, mm. I was in Chandigarh. I went to an institute in Patiala, mm. and they hired me. And what they offered me was like a a a a major salary. I was yeah. like. Leave everything aside. I'm going to do it just for the money of it. I was like, wow. Yeah. I was like, okay, lovely. And then over the past next six, seven, eight months, slowly, steadily, you do fall in love with absolutely with with, with your job, with what you do, and that yeah. it it grew over me. Not yeah. that I did it because I wanted to become a teacher, but yeah. it organically happened. I did it for the money bit of it, and I'll be very honest with yeah. you. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, I love that. I actually love that. You know, honestly, from your side, Vani, I think many people they sometimes feel that you know, okay, for the passion of a certain like job, they got into something. But I feel like money being a motivation is not something to be ashamed of. Oh, I absolutely. think that is one absolutely. of the biggest. Anyway, because ultimately, what you're doing. Work hard for something, but bank thodi na lootai. Yeah, exactly. You know, you 
we worked hard for you for for exactly. it and i i think and then and then i realized that okay this is a nice profession it's a clean profession i can make an impact i can make a difference i can inspire people i'm a good yeah. teacher yeah. all of this organically happens one fine day i didn't get up like bhagat singh for that matter and i'm a big fan yeah. of his that okay i will get azadi so i was like okay, okay. no no i don't want to change the education the face of education in our country we say that you know it's very uh, it sounds it sounds very nice it's very oh my god quintessential i want to become like you know but yeah. for me it didn't start like that my biggest right. motivation was to become financially independent yeah. and financially independent in a way that i can okay you know take care of myself ye nahi ki some chiller mil raha hai mujhe yeah exactly and, and then one thing led to the other and it led to the other and it led yeah. to the other yeah absolutely and i think ultimately like what we are all striving for is financial independence and that is why like money being a motivation to pursue anything should be something that you actually should be proud of you know it should not be something that pulls you down got it so and then ultimately yes once you do start you know doing something uh, you know you do start uh, you you fall in love with the process and then you know things take place organically so that is that is how it works beautiful beautiful answer so why did tell me how did vedantu happen like tell me what was your role How did you bag it? How did it all start? It's a very interesting journey. It's a billion oh, dollar, you know, company now. So all yeah, right. what's that story? See, like? uh, the you know, in life also, Nikhil, I all this is something which is which because of my life's journey, and because of my life experiences, I am a big believer in two words. Uh, one of them is serendipity. you know and the other is gratitude and serendipity is like luck by chance and it doesn't mean that you're just sitting under a banyan tree and suddenly you know asharfiyon ki barish hone lagegi upar se you have to work hard for it but you've also got to trust the universe and you've also got to believe that you know out of millions and billions of people out there working their ass out if something great happens to you you born in a certain family you go to a certain college you have a certain network and things fall in place there is this certain serendipitous element to it so absolutely you know the vedantu part of it uh, uh let me chart out my entire journey and i'll i'll try and do it very quickly so that because i'm sure it's very inspirational and it's also very motivational for a lot of people yeah. so my very first job at lakshya forum for competitions limited in patiala way back in 2010 mm-hmm. was where i spent two to one and a half years uh, mm-hmm. trying to teach and i absolutely loved it and yeah. then you know in 2012 i got married to the love of my life and would you believe it i was upset like nobody's business okay i was like oh my god i have to leave my job that's the kind <laughs> of <laughs> that's the kind of you know attachment i also had yeah. to becoming independent correct and to becoming a person in my whole own right and not becoming dependent on anybody just imagine i got i got like married on the 8th yeah. and the company called lakshya got acquired by a mumbai based company on the 10th and okay. they have a center in the place where my husband gets posted so my husband's a gunner in the army and he gets posted yeah. to nasik uh, yeah. in maharashtra yeah. and we have a center there can you imagine what are the odds yeah. so i don't leave lakshya and i go to this uh, company called mt educate and i'm there with them from 2012 to 2015 three odd years we have one center when i join seven centers when i leave it's a mm. thriving work i absolutely love it and adore it yeah. in 2016 17 when i finally have to leave nasik Mm-hmm. Uh, and that also another story like this so my husband clears a very very uh, you know prestigious exam in the defense forces called the defense services staff course dssc uh, for people you know who don't know yeah. it it's a very prestigious tri service course which happens yes. in wellington so my husband okay. clears it and i'm like uh, i'll have to leave <laughs> nasik my <laughs> job again is got for a toss but yeah. that's the time these people who own lakshya and who sold lakshya to the mt educate company was starting something called vedantu in oh, bangalore wow. okay. and then i i just uh, touched base with them i said what are you guys doing i'm finally leaving mt educate they were like we're doing something for lakshya and i i i've been doing something called vedanta it was like a baby we were like five six employees hardly anything mm. no students nothing it was a b2b back then and they were like mm. why don't you come and join us i said tum logon ke liye kuch nahi hai main aake kya karungi type they were like no 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 let's just see how it works out and would you believe it nikhil my first salary in in vedantu i think the first one year it was like 3 or 1000 for the first two three months oh wow 3000 okay. rupees a month imagine and and then it was like some 7 8 9000 yeah so a couple of crores when i left so that's like the journey into becoming the stakeholder in one of india's largest edtech organization so what i want to yeah. talk through this is is when 2017 we started with antu i was one person who used to give calls to parents arrange meetings talk make material take classes oh. jot down notes you we were like a team of just about 5 6 people yeah you know and and to a point where our funding had not really come through and then series a b c d e 
and then becoming a unicorn and then becoming yeah. a part of the advertisement with Amit Khan. My first class, rem- yeah. imagine one on one, a student and then 10 students, 15 students. I still remember going crazy when there was a batch of like, let's say 100 students. I went crazy with joy. I was yeah. like, oh my God, is this for real? Yeah. To like lakhs of students on a YouTube channel to round. I, I remember taking class of like around 10 crazy. or 1000 students together. Wow. And, but this, during this entire journey, Nikhil, what really matters is perseverance. I remember from Wellington, we got mm. posted to a place, uh, thanks to my husband's job in the army, in Indo- the yeah. Burma border. And yeah. I'm, I'm not I'm not exaggerating, I'm not lying here. I, and that is the time Vedanta had kind of just taken wings and was starting off. And I, yeah. I so clearly remember, there was this huge banyan tree in our courtyard. Mm. Mm. And I had like some 10 dongles, Nikhil. Mm. 5, 6 Airtel, ke, 2, 3 BSNL, ke, 5, 6. Because baha, Indo-Burma border, the network was so sketchy. Yeah. So, so sketchy. It was a place close to Pangsau Pass at around some 5,000 odd feet. Yeah. Zero network sometimes, incessant rainfall, rainforests. So I was in the polythene ke andar, wo mein dongle laga ke rakhti thi. Ab koi chal gaya, ab koi chal gaya. Mujhe ek YouTube video upload karne ke liye, shayad banane ke liye 5 minutes lagte the, upload karne ke liye 2 ghandte lagte the. Wow. Because that's yeah. how, but during all of this, mm-hmm. the only thing that I didn't do was give up. But I have a very special message, Nikhil, to, yeah. to girls or to women who are watching this video through you. So, yeah. you know, and then what happened around 2019, my husband got a call from the United Nations. So he was, uh, he was deployed with the UN. UN. Mm-hmm. Uh, and during this time, I was still there in, in Assam. Got it. And, you know, how important it is to have conviction in yourself, how important it is to have self-belief, Nikhil. And sometimes, you know, we the small town people, yeah. in spite of the fact that we are very good at so many things, we lack it. So, you know, I've, I've, I've been an army officer's daughter, like you said, so I've, I've always stayed in cantonments, got married very early in my life. Yeah. Uh, right after my graduation year and a half, I got married. Mm. Uh, and again, the contonement life started. So I was smart. I was intelligent. <laughs> I, I'm saying this, but yeah. yeah. But I lacked that conviction because I never got that kind of exposure of a big town. Mm. That, mm. you know, that I can do so much in life and I can achieve and aspire and do so much. So I remember when Samrat, my husband, went to the United Nations. That's the time I shifted to Bangalore, Nikhil. And oh. all my life, I thought that, you know, people in Bangalore, Delhi, they're made of different material. They're way too smart than us. We are like the small town people. And when I went there, Nikhil, I have to say this on camera. I owned it. I absolutely, I became like, like the showstopper. Because you see, we the small town people, we have aspirations. We have hopes. We we are capable of doing great stuff. The only thing that we sometimes lack is... And we don't lack fire by any chance, by any stretch of imagination. And sometimes the only Correct. thing that we lack is that is that self-belief. You know, and once we get that, once we we see the the power that lies within us, we are able to ignite it somehow, then we are yeah. absolutely unstoppable. How I owned it from 2019 to 2023 till the time I left Vedantu, I can't yeah. begin to tell you. And then I was like, oh dude. Pani kam hai tu mere saamne types. You know, that kind of attitude, <laughs> that attitude that comes yeah. with the right exposure and the right amount of self-belief and also also little humility. Yeah. You know, so make sure of all of that. And I think that small town aspiration, oh, that's dead. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's yeah. just... It, it, it's, it is, it's it is. Legit. I and mean, the journey, me, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry, but that makes me believe in the story yeah. of India, Nikhil. Because Correct. I have always stayed in small towns and I now know that it's going to be India's decade. It's going to be a decade yeah. of people like you and me, hardworking, perseverant, yeah. humble, yet aspirational. And Correct. and 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 the penetration of, of internet in these small yeah. towns is something which is going to be totally it's it's going to take us to another level altogether absolutely i agree i agree and i think like india is just progressing so fast it's so rapid that i i completely agree with this this decade is definitely going to be you know our countries and uh, the journey of actually your journey actually vani is just i was like thinking about it it is so like the word you use serendipitous is it's so true and at the same time like it's so inspiring you know from where it started and where like what it became so what do you think like you know, my question to you is that, like, what do you think made Vedantu a unicorn? Like, of course, there are people, you know, working on it. And, uh, you know, there's, I think there was a need also in the market for the same for an organization like this, for a platform like this. Uh, but what do you think truly propelled Vedantu to actually become a unicorn? Like, it took, of, of course, like, years of effort. It took years of hard work. It took a lot of investment. 
but you know there are so many startups which are like starting out and you know initially like thing like the days seem very grim you know you're not able to see the long like bigger picture always uh, so what do you think has made vedantu a unicorn not just vedantu nikhil for that matter any organization you see i am one of the biggest fans of two organizations and i would love because these these are two people who totally inspire me one of them is mr shridhar vembu who's the founder of zoho analytics uh, zoho. i'm like this huge fan of him and how he's absolutely. absolutely transforming rural tamil nadu for that matter another yes. person uh, who's big fan i am is uh, mu sigma the analytics company uh, mm. you know and and uh, the kamath brothers uh, zero dha for that matter yeah. so you see what and and the story that comes out of them or or yeah. be it uh, mr shridhar vembu zoho analytics be it mu sigma be it zero the or vedant or any other organization for that matter the story right. is a very strong sense of why you know yeah. for us or for me you know like i said it started for money but then over a period of time mm. my why my personal why and the organizations why kind of really synced up and that is to provide a level playing field to a student you see where i was coming from i was coming from a point where i felt that a small town did not give me the right opportunities a small town did not give me the right opportunities as a child and maybe it took away certain opportunities from me even as an adult because i didn't really have that kind right. of exposure that a bombay delhi has or a bangalore yeah. has yeah. you see so and i felt that that why that my why aligns so clearly with the why of vidatu where they also wanted to provide a level playing field that somebody who's studying in let's say timbuktu should have the access to mm. the same quality material that somebody has who's in kota and not you know the economic barriers and the geographical barriers need to be broken so i feel mm. any organization nikhil if they have yeah. if they have a unmet need a problem mm. that they can solve and a mm. strong sense of why they are doing what they are doing because mm. you see you have to the founders alone cannot do a thing it's it's right. it's just not possible you've got to have yeah. an entire team and you've got to enthuse the team to do more you know till the right. last man last woman standing and how do you mm. do that you cannot do it with glamour you cannot do it if the founders too handsome or the founders too beautiful it doesn't mm-hmm. work like that it can only happen with purpose with Got mission it. because that right. can enthuse people so i think a strong sense why? of why a purpose yeah. an alignment with that greater good for the world so true. that so true. is what that's that's when you know great things can happen Nick. yeah exactly yeah. because i think it is only like you know when your why is strong that you are even actually able to persevere in the long term yeah. otherwise yes. you know you you fizzle yeah. out you fizzle yes, out yes absolutely absolutely so, absolutely yeah, so there's 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 yeah yes yes um all right also one more like question that you know comes to my mind vani is that there are a lot of ai tools you know this is actually a boom of ai also like these you know past couple of years we have seen a you know a lot of ai tools coming up how do you think ai tools are going to shape the way education is currently being you know uh done in india do you think it's going to like these this ai thing is going to have an impact on the education of like the india or even in the world in general see uh there are two kinds of people nikhil in the world uh one of them are the naysayers you know they are like the ones oh ai is bad and it's terrible and it's going to take away our Correct. jobs and it's going to be yeah. you know we we must not and i think uh, these are people who lose relevance over a period of time uh because you see technology mm. is here technology is here to stay technology is not going to go anywhere and the earlier we come to terms with it the earlier we adapt to it the earlier we realize that it's for our good uh that this is happening i think uh the more equipped we are to deal with the onslaught of technology also because it is in so many ways overwhelming but i personally Absolutely. feel that see i uh, i i use ai and a lot of ai tools very well how whatever mm. prompts you give and whatever uh, course you do to get the best prompts it will always lack a human mm. element uh that's yeah. that's that's being human that little touch of that that tenderness that compassion that empathy that mm. care that understanding yeah. that led psychological understanding that humans have that even even Absolutely. jealousy for that matter and all that you do because of being jealous and things like that 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 yes. layeredness is nuance of being a human ai can never have but at the same Cut. time it can make your repetitive work it can make your mechanical work it can make your uh, mm. you know sometimes deliberate work like a robotic surgery and things like that so much more easier so there has to yeah. be like this beautiful 
wonderful marriage between what AI can do and what AI cannot do and what humans can do. And uh, as an educator, uh, you know, these things that are very, uh, that are time consuming, that are repetitive, that, that really have no logical purpose or long term psychological understanding purpose, I think they should be outsourced to AI. And we must find ways and means to kind of incorporate more and more AI right from primary level. Because suddenly so many people find themselves handicapped when it comes to technology. Remember when the when the entire uh, um, buzz had come that, that these, uh, you know, banks and everything else has to be computerized. It was this entire generation which felt very uh, sidelined, very overwhelmed, overwhelmed. yes. Yeah. So I think right from a younger age, and I'm sure kids nowadays are such fast learners that there have yeah. to be ways and means to integrate it, to make it as seamless as uh, and as part of our day-to-day activities as possible. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Also, one more thing, like, Avani, like, you've been in the education field for so long. Uh, you know, I've been dealing with children and you've been dealing with the youth. Uh, what are, according to you, like, still some, you know, pressing issues or challenges uh, in the current education system of India? Like, uh, you know, there were, like, recently the need controversy happened. And, you know, a couple of, you know, things are there still prevalent in the society. So according to you, what are like the most pressing issues or challenges that currently exist within the education, you know, sector of India? See, uh, I think with the new education policy coming and with the vision of the present government, I'm a big believer Mm -hmm. of the vision of Mr. Narendra Modi. I think he's way ahead of his time. He's introduced a new education policy. Uh, yeah. I think even that, and you know, um, Nikhil, it's it's sometimes very easy to put it out on the government, to put it out on that mm-hmm. one person, on that one chief minister, on that one minister and say, okay, listen, this is bad. You know, this Correct. is terrible, the exam is leaked. I, th- I think it's fine, mistakes happen and, and uh, yeah. the culprits should be punished, not, not, not giving that. But I feel humans have this entire tendency to put it on that one person, one institute, one organization and hard dolo types. I Go feel what the bigger problem is, and because I've been an educator, and that's the reason why I kind of gave up on Vedantu and, and, and moved to Wilder. I also, you know, one of the biggest problems is, is the lack of attention. Mm. Is the lack of focus. Is the lack mm. of clarity. And mm. also is the, is the big hook or like the mm. biggest, uh, you know, addiction to consumption of material that is not relevant. Uh, I cannot begin to tell you, and this has been my personal experience for the past so many years. Mm. You know, I feel, and as a teacher, why I used to feel so proud of doing what I'm doing, Nikhil, is because I used to feel that my target group, my target audience, the people that I work with, the people whom I have influence over, whatever little I have, is the future of my country. And that used to drive me day in and day out. The youth of my nation, people between the age groups of, let's say, 16 to 24, millions of them listen to me, follow me, and that if there I can influence them to to become a better version of themselves, then I've done some national service. I've been of use in in okay. making this nation great. Mm-hmm. And I feel that that particular community, and very few people are talking about it, is highly addicted to watching absolute bullshit on the internet. Yeah. They really That's true. They consume anything and everything. They yeah. waste their time. They are addicted to social media, uh, yes. which is a mindless pursuit of absolute nothingness. They don't gain anything out of it. They're scrolling. This ability to just scroll and watch stuff which does not add any value to yeah. their life, to any skill development, to any mindfulness, any thoughtfulness is just not happening. And that's the reason I really wanted to develop a platform where in, right. where in, you know, in those four or five minutes that you spend on a platform versus hours that you spend somewhere else, you're able to gain something. You're able to Got slow it. down, you're able to become more mindful, more thoughtful. And that is, that's the thought behind Wilder. How far we yeah. go, what we'll do is for us to, is to, for us to find out and do it. But for me, that's right. like my biggest, you know, when, when I was in Vedanta, my biggest driving force was mm. to have a level playing field, Nikhil. Yeah. Ensure that people across the country have access to quality education. And with hundreds right. and thousands of teachers and so many institutes doing it and all free content on YouTube now, I think that that game for me 
had kind of come to its natural closure been there done mm-hmm. that but for me i think the biggest challenge in education nowadays is to is to make them see sense on social sure. media see and i cannot say nikhil that social media mat karo it's correct nahi ho sakta it's not right. possible i cannot take away their mobile phones we right. cannot tell them don't make a social media account it's no it's like t- telling somebody in iron age ki bhai tu lohe ke aujar mat bana or sure. telling someone in agricultural age don't grow wheat go become a forager exactly. you know it's exactly. not going to happen that that shift has happened but can yeah. we make can we can we make a place for them where there is consumption of the right kind of material that's yeah. a challenge nikhil correct more than any other educational challenge i think this is the challenge to show them mm-hmm. the right things to make them see the right kind of stuff to make their brain think in the right direction correct correct you know, i agree think, because i think most of these you know social media platforms that we are using it has become so mindless you know people are not applying themselves at all they're just mindlessly consuming stuff and the thing is that even though it is mindless still that kind of information or that content it resides in your brain you know in your subconscious you know, can, and it affects you yes like just day before yesterday the us uh, wants to pass a law against uh, social media uh, big wigs because they feel yeah. that the way they are taking over the attention of the child and totally kind of rewiring the brain is is so uncool and Correct. because these are giants that we are pitted against yeah you know this this way little that normal individuals or small organizations can do but i feel that attention deficit Correct. is the biggest challenge uh, that we face absolutely absolutely so yes coming to builder now uh, vani like this is again a new venture that you have taken up so like to educate our audience can you tell us like what exactly builder is and how did like this venture of you know this new venture start for you okay um so see one one of our uh, co-founders happens to be a monk nikhil he's written over 20 okay. books um oh wow met, yes his name is om swami he's written over 20 books he's met around millions of people and uh, and then he realized that this world intrinsically um uh, is full of hate abuse toxicity and and there's this absolutely no safety but you see how Agreed. humans are hardwired and how <laughs> how how humans are they would they would for them safety is they'll be like okay safety to given it you know it's it's like it's given there there we don't really have to think about it unless something really Uh, uh bad happens to somebody they don't really think about safety the way they should but once we create a safe platform and that's what builder has been able to do he booted out mm-hmm. all the trolls and the toxicity what do you do on a safe platform so for mm-hmm. us uh, nikhil now the biggest problem that we really want to tackle and solve on a platform that we've inherently mm-hmm. built to be safe and without toxicity is for people to be more mindful is to people to slow down when it comes to content consumption is for people to absorb things more mindfully and to really curate a platform wherein there is there is gain so every time you go and you like you use the word mindless it's not it's not like something that you just go and you consume and you feel so bereft of you know correct you you lost your time you've lost your energy and you feel oh my god this is like what did i even do for all these hours so we want to create a platform wherein across various genres people have the ability to come uh, meet with like minded people search their material talk to them read write about it and overall kind of develop into a more uh, rounded individual so that's yeah. that's what we want to do uh, ask people to to be more aware of themselves and of the material that they consume correct correct all right so like just to like for my own like better understanding like uh how does like this work like how will how will it like how will the platform eliminate like toxicity and like you know hate comments that people typically leave so how will that like work on the platform just well, so that people understand the technical side of it the yeah. whenever you put this little barrier no like okay this is a like in the past 7 8 months that we've done our pilots we've just yeah. blocked two people out of around 1 and 1/2 to 2 lakh downloads that we've had so mm, the moment right. you say you see the the moment you you put that barrier also that this is a safe platform people themselves are more mindful and that's why i believe that even now we have the chance to bring about mm. that change but otherwise what we do is uh, we are also an ai back backed platform so our algorithms are very strong we've got around seven patterns from the us for the algorithms that we've made 
and yeah. you are able to sense in real time uh, and it's it's learning that uh, mm. tool is constantly learning so they are able to sense in real time that okay this word seems and sounds uh, um, inappropriate at that particular moment and it does then ask you that do you want to post this or not you can override the algorithm and go ahead and post it but once Correct. that happens again and again and we remember that and we see that and our back end team checks that then we stop the ability of that person to go out and comment and, and mm. you know, and but there's a very faint line, Nikhil, and that's a lovely question that you've asked. There's a very faint line between what we feel is toxic as a person and what you may feel is toxic. So how do we uh, have then freedom of speech versus deciding what is toxic and what is not? So what we've done okay. for that is that till the time you're posting something on your own wall, it's fine, mm. under unless mm. there are expletives or something that you should absolutely not mm. do. But suppose you yeah. go ahead and you post something on your own wall, you have the freedom of speech, you have the right to be whoever you want to be and post. But the moment yeah. you move to somebody else's wall and then it's your opinion versus their opinion, that is when our regulations are much more stronger. Correct, correct. Agreed. And you know, the, the place that we really want to focus on, Nikhil, through Wilder mm -hmm. is, uh, we feel that, that the problem with material online mm -hmm. uh, is is if I if we don't want to take a moral high ground and say that but you know it's yeah. the frivolosity of it and the quickness of it that the audio video content consumption is the shots part of it or the real it's just so frivolous and so fast so the entire idea of spending some time reading you see mm -hmm. like I'm a big fan of another one person and his name is Uncle Variku and you know yeah. one thing that he says time and again is that if you really want to declutter your brain if you really want to be more mindful if you really want to you know, think through your thought process, take a paper and pen and write. And when, it. it, when it's hazy in your head, and the moment you start writing it down, it'll, it'll yeah. clear up. And we feel that's a lost art. So between the two less of a Twitter with just 140, 180 words and too yeah. much of like a medium and a blog, yeah. Wilder wants to be that one space where you have like this 400, 450 word limit and you write yeah. your thoughts in that, thereby crystallizing what you want to say and write. So, and a place which kind of by design tells you to slow down because the moment you slow mm. down, your ability to be more aware increases. And at the end of the day, awareness is everything. Correct. Agreed. And you know, when I said, you know, that uh, it has become like mindless scro scrolling like on Instagram and YouTube, I think a large part of it is because of how fast paced, you know, each content piece is. That yeah. it is so fast that it gets over before you can actually start thinking. Right. And then so the I think... material is so less. See, we even read, uh, we have classics that we read even now, Nikhil. Classics mm. that were written so many years ago and they they paved the way for the thought processes even today. Uh, so it. I think the quickness and the fastness of the material also leads to uh, the shallowness of the material or so we believe. Mm. And that's, so that's something that we need to challenge. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, 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 I love the vision of uh, Builder Rani. I think it's an excellent initiative. And I think it is a... You're a it part is of it. I, is... I loved it. Yesterday you posted something. Yes. It's very nice. Yes. Absolutely. It's, it's actually a very fun platform to be on. And I think it is something that will definitely pick up way more like in the future because uh, people will themselves, you know, realize that, you know, there is a necessity for them to actually consume content which is right for their soul as well, right? Okay. Uh, so I think Builder is an excellent, excellent platform and uh, it'll surely, surely do well. Um, uh, yeah, so I think the next question that I have, uh, Vani, is that you have you know, navigated through multiple careers in you know, your uh, life, your journey. So for people, like for students who are unsure about you know, what they want to do and like what career path they should take, what advice do you have for them? For oh, people who are just still unsure about my dukhti rug. This is, <laughs> this is something I want which I can speak for a very long time. You know, I mean, again, right, in, uh, uh, speaking from experience and from my own honesty, I think when, when you're 20 year old, no, you suddenly feel, oh my God, you're very old. When you're 25 year old, you suddenly feel, oh my God. You see, and, and it's so, <laughs> like, I really want to tell people who are in their 20s, you have your entire life in front of you. Do not think that you know that this is the end of it. Like, yeah. you know, I had the courage to kind of absolutely restart my career when I was in my mid-30s when people would kind of feel settled and give it all away. And in your 20s, yeah. it's an open battleground. Go ahead, do what you want. I also want to tell people, Nikhil, I've, I've, and this again comes from a very personal space. I've always been very guarded. I've also yeah. always been very uh, wary of uh, 
doing the unknown and taking chances. Uh, I remember yeah. when I was in Vedanta, I was called by uh, the founders of Baijus uh, and yeah. at 4x, 5x uh, the salary. I was called mm. by the founders of Fun Academy at maybe 10x the salary yeah. that I was drawing in Vedanta. And these are not just one off uh, uh, conversations that I had with them, uh, multiple, multiple yeah. conversations with both the founders. And I was, I was very happy in my shell, uh, very mm. reluctant to take chances. And that will be my core message to people. Go out and take those chances. Go out and tick those boxes. Go out and and just cover all those bucket lists because you never know. You absolutely yeah. never know what what hits and what strikes and what you're capable of and you know and what you're not capable of. It's all in the mind. You're only as weak and as strong as the mind games that you play and the mindsets and, and maybe the, the, you know, the mental blocks that you put on your own self. So, so you're true. young, you're way too young. Uh, <laughs> life has just started and take yeah. those chances. That will be my message to you. Just take those chances, you know, under unless it's, mm-hmm. it's, and, and you know, what Nikhil, like what really, and this is again, such an important thing. And this is again, by gratitude, I, I was very wise. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I feel uh, to be able to invest my money well. And that's again one very important message I would want to tell the youth of our country. Mm-hmm. That, you know, when I when I got those big bucks, I didn't go a- ahead and bo- buy a Merc for myself or buy a Beamer for myself yeah. just to show yeah. the world that I've arrived. Because, you know, <laughs> I was like this biggest fan of Morgan Housen and the psychology of money. I don't have to prove a point to anybody. Um, yeah. Wealth is what is there in your bank and not what is there in your uh, garage. You know, that's, okay. that's just, that's, that's, that's another, I, I, I did not want to prove a point to anybody. So this financial independence that I got yeah. from investing my money well gave me wings to be able to dream another dream that is wilder, to be able to okay. leave everything behind, to not yeah. look back and to not think twice about leaving a settled career and to get into the hardships of, of, of starting up again. So uh, okay. to everybody out there, take those calculated risks. By risks, I don't mean that, you know, your parents have spent a fortune trying to get you an MBA from IIM Ahmedabad. You're working for Pricewaterhouse Cooper and you suddenly leave it all to open a chai ka thela. So I'm not saying that, but take calculated risk. Listen to your heart. Uh, yeah. You know, entrepreneurship is a fire that will mold you. That's what my mentor says. You know, it'll change you totally. Do that. Uh, but uh, also take calculated risks and invest your money well. Really, exactly. it is it is the freedom. You know, in in just one line, if I have to sum it up, what is money for me, Nikhil? It's the freedom. It's the freedom over my time. You know, okay. uh, and and that is the power of money. It's it's not yes. maybe uh, if it's it, it could be hopping continents for somebody. It could be driving the best four wheel for somebody. But for me, it's the freedom that it gives me. So the moment you start right. investing your money well, and the moment mm. uh, you uh, you know you take those risks and decide what you want to do, uh, I think uh, you'll be a totally changed person. And we must take those risks once in a while. And that's why okay. I feel little, that's also the power of education. See, if things don't work out, which they don't for so many entrepreneurs, you always have the yeah. ability to go back to, uh, to a stable job, you know. Uh, okay. So um, it's just a mindset, you know, entrepreneurship. And you must try it. You must go out, give it your all. If it doesn't work out, you always have your have your degree to fall back on. So true. So true. I think I, I think this message was for me also because I turned I'm turning 21 soon and I was like oh my god I've become so old. Oh no, <laughs> that Ask me when I was 24, 25. The world was at our feet. I was like oh my god I can't do this. I wish I could go back and take those chances. You know that yeah, I did so not. Uh, that I and you know, I think 20s, you know one yeah and I think 20s Vani is especially the time where you should take those risks because 100%. essentially you're in your yeah, you're in your prime. There, there are no responsibilities as such, yes, right? Yes, yes. So yes, it's it's the yes. time to actually explore, take those risks, yes. and like you said about you know investing. You know, Invest. Path. I think for you guys, yeah. Nikhil, and and the 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 entire you know tribe age tribe that you fall into, I tell myself and I tell countless women, this is the best time to be born a woman. Uh, if not now, mm. when? If not me, who is my mantra? And I keep telling that to everybody. But for people who are in yeah. their twenties right now, and especially people like you, Nikhil, whose parents have had a stable government job and they're going to be pensioners and they're not going to really yeah. look up to you uh, to kind of, uh, you know, uh, it's an extra if you do things for them, but they are not really dependent, dependent on, on you. In fact, they are the ones who are, who are fueling your dreams also. It could not be a better time. Like yes. you 
on your it, shoulders this nation will move forward to its rightful place i feel nikhil absolutely absolutely and that's that's a very beautiful beautiful answer and i i think i i, I needed to hear this too <laughs> so it was uh, yeah beautiful beautiful answer i think that brings us to the conclusion of this podcast money now we can head towards the rapid fire round so are you oh. ready Okay, yeah, yeah, totally. That's <laughs> quite a surprise, great. yes. Great, great, great. So the first question for you, Vani, in the rapid fire is: What is your favorite guilty pleasure snack? <laughs> a giant <laughs> basti lays. <laughs> lays. I which love flavor? that kurkure achari basti. Oh my god! <laughs> I feel so guilty after that, and I was like, okay, no, or even those green uncle chips. I love them. <laughs> okay, all right, great. If you could have any one superpower, what would it be? uh okay this is very deep answer for this to bring the pride of india back i think what colonization and what 6 7 8 100 years of uh, invasion oh, wow. did to india was it kill okay. our pride nikhil we mm. especially for sanatanis i am a believer of sanatan dharma we yeah. forgot our culture we forgot our pride we forgot our uh, our civilizational history we forgot how great we were And, so true. Uh, and and if if there if there could be and I think it's only pride that leads to national mm-hmm. awakening and that leads to civilizational rebirths and that leads to us feeling invincible. It's just mm-hmm. that collective conscious pride. And if you could bring that back, absolutely nothing like that. Wow, that is probably the most unique and I think the best answer for this uh, question I could ever gotten. Excellent, you, excellent. Okay, all right. If you could listen to only one song for the rest of your life, which one would it be? uh hanuman chalisa it's it 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 kind of it really fills me with uh, with some super cool energy excellent again okay all right if you could switch lives with anyone for a day who would it be Mm-mm-mm. mr modi how does he work so hard i am his biggest yeah. fan You know, I and I was I was just telling somebody the other day. Imagine working in Mr. Modi's team. So I I was very overworked some other day. I was like, oh God, this is so much. I was like, imagine working in his team. And I'm like, three minutes before I get home, ye kar do. Subah three minutes, twelve minutes, kuch kar. He just doesn't sleep and he's exactly. Yeah, he's amazing. And the stakes are so high at that stage. Yes, 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 yes. All right, okay. What is the most adventurous thing that you've ever done? Okay, so. So you know, right now we're posted in Kashmir, and it's 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 the hotbed of counterinsurgency. And before that, when we were posted in uh, Assam um, and uh, that Burma border, again a hotbed of uh, alpha terrorism and counterinsurgency. And I love hikes. I absolutely love hiking. So I used okay. to uh, you know try and be somebody who I am not, some local tourist and things <laughs> like that, and go out and come back and feel that I'm going to get kidnapped. I know my God, yeah. <laughs> that that is. Even now, I go out and I have hundred odd names that I give to people that I'm so and so and I'm so and so, and then I go out and and do what I have to do. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty adventurous. Okay, what is your favorite word in the English language? Gratitude. Gratitude. Excellent. Yeah. What is your favorite book? If truth be told, by my mentor Om Swami, it's it's uh, it's a very truthful account of his life experiences and uh, kind of changed my life and made me a more honest person. All right, excellent, excellent. Also, the last question is the last question. If you if you could give some advice to the ten year old Vani, what would it be? You're beautiful. I was an obese child, Nikhil, uh, mm. and I, all my life I felt. that i'm ugly for like the longest time ever mm, mm. and 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 that shaped a lot of decisions of my young adulthood mm. if i could go and tell yeah. her that she is enough that she is smart and she is confident and she is pretty i think it it will mm-hmm. mean a lot for my for my teen and my younger self especially those self esteem issues that i had i yeah. i would have dealt with the evil world a lot better Wow. The young, the young Vani would be very proud to see where Vani is right now. Oh, thank you, Nikhil. <laughs> thank you, He's thank beautiful. you, thank you. So I think Vani, that brings us to the end of the podcast. It was an amazing session. I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation that we had. Uh, all of our social links will be down in the description. Vani, what are your parting thoughts? Anything that you have for us? Uh, thank you so much, Nikhil, for having me over. I wish Sync Up all the success uh, from the deepest corner of my heart. I want. Uh, 
army kids and especially young uh, india kids to do well because i feel that it's on your shoulders that bharat mata would forge ahead and take her rightful place as the world leader so your parents Thank have raised you. a very cool child i'm super proud of you and uh-huh. i'm so glad i know you thank you for having me nikhil it was Same a here. pleasure right. absolute pleasure thank you so much honey thank you so so much for being here thank you guys do subscribe like bye bye